Hello and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, glad to have you back. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your colleagues, classmates, or friends. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we will continue our series on basic statistics, specifically descriptive statistics. Now up until now in this playlist, we have focused on how to describe a single variable. So frequency tables, histograms, stem and leaf displays, etc. So now we will branch out into how to describe two variables at the same time using tables. So let's go ahead and get started. So this video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. You are here because you want to learn something. And there are a few better places to learn than The Great Courses Plus. There you can watch thousands of videos about almost any topic you can imagine. So find the link in the description below to see how you can get a free trial to The Great Courses Plus. So in this video, we will talk about how to summarize two variables simultaneously. Another name for this is called cross tabulation or cross tabs for short. So much of what we have learned so far in this playlist relates to describing a single variable. So we talked about frequency tables, histograms, stem and leaf displays, etc. Now cross tabulation is a table summary for two variables at the same time, hence the word cross. So two variables where they intersect. Now it's often used to show the relationship between two variables. Now cross tabs is fantastic because it is very, very flexible and can show different types of information with just a click of the mouse. Now the variables can be categorical, which we talked about earlier, or quantitative. Now quantitative variables are often placed into bins or classes like we do in a histogram. So in the histogram video, we put people into age groups or bins or age classes, say like 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, etc. You can do the exact same thing in cross tabs if you put people into bins. Now cross tabulation is used in more advanced statistics, such as chi-square and ANOVA. So learning the basics of cross tabs will pay off later. Now the size of the cross tabulation is the number of categories of one variable multiplied by the number of categories of the second variable. So if the first variable has five categories and the second variable has six categories, then the cross tabulation will have five times six or 30 individual cells where each variable intersects with the other variables. So as I said, each cell is an intersection of the two categories at that point. So the first category of the five will intersect with all six categories of the second variable. And then you do that across the cross tabs and you'll end up with 30 individual cells. If you've worked in Microsoft Excel, you get this basic idea. Now also, cross tabulations have total cells for each column and row in addition to a grand total cell in the lower right corner. And you'll see how all this looks here in a second. Now in Microsoft Excel, cross tabulations are usually done using pivot tables. Now this video is not how to do pivot tables in Excel. I will have many screenshots of a pivot table, but I might do that in a different video. So if you've used Microsoft Excel, the way cross tabs are usually done are via pivot tables. So let's talk about some company data that we're gonna use for this video. So we have a data set that has in one column, four regions. So north, south, east, and west. And then we have five different product segments. So smartphones, televisions, gaming, appliances, or computers. So you can imagine that this sort of fictitious company is an electronics company. So maybe like a Best Buy or something like that. So in this data set, we have 100 observations of sales for each region times the segment combination. So over here on the right, you can see just a slice of that data. So we have the North region smartphones, and then we have the sales in thousands of dollars. So the North region had smartphone sales of $150,000. And then the North had television sales of $161,000. So again, this is just a few rows of that data set 
but we'll look at the entire data set as we go. So before we get into the actual cross tabs, let's look at things on a single dimension. So here on the left, we see that we have the sales for each region. So the East region had a total sum of sales of about $7.7 .7 million. The North, 7.6 million approximately, South and then West. So overall, this company had about $29.7 million in sales. That's 29,698 in thousands. Now over here on the right, we have it broken down by segment. So appliances sold about $6 million, computers about $5.7 million, and so on and so forth. Now notice that the grand total for sales is the same in both tables. And that's because all we're doing is dividing up the grand total of sales in the left by region and on the right by segment. But the grand total of sales is the same. Now, as I said at the beginning, the great thing about cross tabs is that they're extremely flexible. So in the previous slide, we looked at total sales. Now here we'll look at average sales. So for all of our 100 observations, on the left, we can see that on average, the East region had sales of $309,000, the North region, $302,000, etc. Now overall, the average sales per observation was $297,000. You can see that in the grand total row. Now over here on the right, we have it broken out by segment. So appliances were 297,000, computers 285,000, et cetera. But the grand total on average, the average sales were the same. So the average sale per observation was $297,000. So you can see that there and that over on the right. Now what about variability? Again, with the click of a mouse, we can see how our sales vary. So this is the standard deviation of sales over here on the left and then the right for segment. So in the East region, we had a standard deviation of $104,000. We can see that in the West region, it was much more variable. It had a variability or standard deviation of $118,000. And then overall, for each observation, the standard deviation was $111,000. So you can look at how things compare to each other and overall. And the same thing is true over here on the right. You can see that the standard deviation for computers was quite low relative to other ones, whereas gaming had the highest variability in its sales. But again, the overall variability is $111,000. So that was the standard deviation for all sales and observations. So now let's go into two variables at the same time. And this is cross tabulation. And here's how that looks. So this is about total sales, and this is wonderful. So we can look at both variables. We have the region over here on the left, those are our rows, and then we have the segments, the market segments across the top. And very easily we can look and find where these intersect. So the way to read this is that over here in the east region, the appliances total sales was $1.7 million, because this is again in thousands. Or we can look at the South region gaming had $1.367 million of sales. Now the great thing about the total rows is we also get the region and the segments in the same table. So overall, the East region over here on the right had $7.727 million of sales. We could see that um, the West region had $7.587 million for the sales. And we can see the segments. So computers had $5.703 million of sales, and the television segment had $5.824 million of sales. So you can see the power of cross tabs. We can look and see where each region intersects with its segment to find out how that was doing at that particular intersection of region and segment. Now we can actually use Excel to add more information using the formatting tool. So here's the exact same chart. Now what we've done is use the conditional formatting feature in Excel to colorize each cell. So we can see that the green represents the highest sales, whereas the red is the lowest sales. So we can see that the gaming segment in the North region 
seems to have the highest sales of $1.859 million. Now we can see that in the dark red, I believe we have televisions in the north had $1.128 million of sales. So we could see that in the table above, which is just fine, but we could also use just one or two clicks in Excel to use the conditional formatting to show where the best sales occurred and where the worst sales occurred based on the intersection of region and segment. Now what about variability? We can do the same thing here. So we can change the cross tabs to actually represent the standard deviation. So here we can see that it appears the computers in the north region had a standard deviation of $46,000. And that was the least variation among all the inter intersections in the cross tabs. We can see that gaming in the south had the highest variability in its sales. So really just with a couple clicks in Excel, going from total sales to standard deviation, we can get the same information. And of course the column totals and the row totals also work. So as far as the regions, we can see that the north had the lowest variability at $110,000 for a standard deviation. We can see that computers, and as far as segment, had the lowest standard deviation at $97,000. And we can look at that compared to the overall standard deviation for sales of $111,000. So you can see all the information that you can get in a cross tab situation because inside each cell, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So how about percent of total sales? So here we've changed everything to a percentage. So we can see that the gaming in the North region accounted for 6.26% of total sales, okay, of overall sales. We can see that televisions in the North were 3.8%. And again, using conditional formatting in Excel, we can see where the hotspots were, what was doing good, what was doing bad in this cross tabs. And of course we have the totals for the columns and the totals for the rows as well. So we can see that it appears gaming was doing very well overall. And over here on the right, we can see that the East region seems to be doing the best out of all four regions. So cross tabs also allows us to do easy comparisons. So in this case, we're gonna look at total sales as compared to the East region. So you can see that the East region is blank and everything else is in comparison to that East region. So compared to the East region, the North region was $48,000 less than that. The South region was $362,000 less and the West $461,000 less. And you can go across each segment and you can tell it's the East region because that's the row that's blank. We're not going column wise, we're going row wise. So we can see that overall, it's the smartphones, the north was 5,000 less than the east, and then the south was $89,000, but in the west, there were $444,000 over the east in smartphone sales. So you can set this up however you want, and that is the beauty and flexibility of cross tabs. You can also rank the segment in this case by region. So again, I'm just giving you different examples of how you can use cross tabs. There are almost infinite ways to utilize cross tabs. So this ranking one is the next. So we're gonna rank the segment by region. So if we go over here in the east, we can look at how every segment was ranked. So in the east, appliances was the first, gaming was the number two segment, computers the third segment, televisions the fourth highest segment, and smartphones the last segment of sales in the East region. Now we could go all the way down to the West region and see that smartphones was first, gaming second, televisions third, computers fourth, and appliances were last. And then overall, we can see that gaming was first, appliances second, televisions third, smartphones fourth, and computers fifth. So again, by using the ranking, breaking up into region, and then comparing it to the grand total in each column, you can see where everything fell, all with one or two clicks of your mouse. So as you can see, cross tabs or cross tabulation is crazy easy and crazy useful. So it's not that difficult. It can be used to gain incredible insights about your data using something very simple and flexible. 
Now, if you have Microsoft Excel, you can do it very easily with pivot tables. So every screenshot you saw in the previous slides was done in Excel using pivot tables. Now, if you have recent versions of Excel, you can use the data formatting to offer even more insights. So the coloring that was done in the cells in the previous slides was done using the conditional formatting in the ribbon in Excel. Now, it is also the foundation, as I mentioned, for certain topics in probability. So things like joint probability and things like that are based on tables. And as I mentioned, it is the basis for other techniques in statistics, like chi-square and ANOVA. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 8,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this lecture from Professor Michael Starbird called Data and Distributions, Getting the Picture, from his course, Meaning from Data, Statistics Made Clear. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free trial. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz to have access to the 8,000 video lecture library or click the link in the description below. Okay, so that wraps up this video in Descriptive Stats, where we looked at how we can use tables, cross tabs, to summarize data and get insights in very interesting ways. Now again, I used Excel, but you can use whatever stats package you tend to have, but I find Excel, especially for this, is one of the easiest. So once you learn how to do pivot tables in Excel, using the pivot table function, you can slice and dice and colorize your data in almost any way you can imagine. So again, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Take care.